Hey guys, Ancap24 here from SmartMadden.com, coming back with another video out of the Pistol Y Trips Formation Scheme series. Today we're going to be looking at a play called PA Cross Up to be able to show you how to beat cover 4, cover 3, cover 2, and man coverage with this play to be able to uh, attack your opponent on anything that he's able to throw at you. It's a great play because it does come as an audible already in um, this formation, so you can use this in a mutt situation. You don't need to be on on a custom book to be able to use this as a uh, normal audible. So let's jump into this and show you how to beat man coverage. There are going to be several different ways to beat man coverage on this play. The play art right here, what you're going to see is you don't have to do anything on the first setup. All you're going to have to do is cut off the play action and fire it to the A receiver when he makes a sharp cut. Even though that the matchup is not a favorable one for us with Jacob Tammy against Luke Keekley. you're going to see that that hard cut by that A receiver is going to be what is going to be needed to get that separation. So we're going to go hike the ball, we're going to cut it off, you're going to see he's going to do that hard cut, see that hard cut right there is going to get him wide open. The next way we're going to go ahead and beat man coverage is we're going to get this B route on the right hand side, which is a unique curl route to be able to be used in our advantage. All we're going to do is go ahead and put the B route on a smart route. It's going to get him about two more yards in, um, deeper on his route in order for him to come back to the, uh, the quarterback. Now, why this is important is because this does show that it's going to be about a 10-yard route. However, you're only going to get about seven yards on it because of the way we're going to throw it. On cover two man or any type of press man coverage, what you're going to see is that that one cornerback is going to chuck that guy at the line of scrimmage. What we're going to do is we're going to time the play to where as soon as he let goes of the running uh, the wide receiver, he's going to be able to be in a position to catch this ball. So I'm going to show it to you on the timing, then I'll show you an instant replay of what exactly we're looking for. So we're going to go here, we're going to cut this off. You're going to see as soon as he let goes, and you're going to throw that ball right there. It's such a sharp, hard cut, and you're timing his hands on the receiver to make it work. So you want to make it a smart route. You're going to cut off the play action here. You're going to see as soon as he let goes of him, you're going to time it right there, and you're going to be able to catch that ball. It's a lot different than a regular curl. It's going to get a little bit more separation than a regular curl. Um, it's definitely something that I use um, against all top DBs. Just because of the cut right there, he's able to catch that ball and be able to get the first down. See how consistent it is? Sometimes the bump will get him inside. Don't worry about it. It's still going to be okay that way. You're going to be able to see how he goes inside that time. You're still going to be able to catch that ball inside if you time it right. As long as you go ahead and get the right timing, you don't want to be late on this throw. You want to be able to time it to where he, when he let goes of that receiver, the ball is there. So you can see how consistent that is. Let me show you an instant replay real quick what I'm talking about. And so you can see exactly what I'm saying as far as he let go. So as soon as you see this guy, he's going to go ahead and chuck him, chuck him, chuck him. Now look at his right hand right here, the one with the blue glove that you can see. As soon as he let go like that, that's when we want to throw the ball. Now if you look at my, my, throw, my, my pass, as soon as I see that is when I started putting my motion in. So I'm waiting for his hand on this side right here to separate from him. As soon as I see that, that's when I decide to throw the ball. Okay, That's the motion that I'm trying to time it with. And then you see over here, so I see that. Here's my delayed reaction. I go ahead and throw it. And because what this guy is going to do, he's going to go back up the field. By the time the, the sharp cuts there, see how he does that little, oh, wow, that type of look by the, the DB, you got that ball with enough separation to catch it and protect the ball, okay? So let me show it to you one more time in fast motion so you can see it. That's what we're trying to look for here. We're looking for him to separate, you throw that ball, and he's going to be able to catch that ball. So that's that other man beater on the right-hand side. This next play here in man coverage is kind of one that I've had a lot of fun running because of the way we're able to get the running back wide open. Okay, So I want to show you first is how this is set up. If you look at the uh, tight end, we showed you earlier that Luke Keekley on the right-hand side is going to be the one that covers him. However, if we move him from right to left, it changes the linebacker's assignments. Now, Thomas Davis on the left-hand side has the tight end, and Luke Keekley has the um, running back. This is going to be key to this play because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this running back to be isolated on that play and trying to get the um, linebacker caught up in traffic so we can get this guy open. So the adjustments we're going to do is we're going to put the X on a drag and the A on a streak. The reason why we do that is because in case Luke Keekley gets through traffic, we want to have a dump off route and that's going to be our X receiver on the drag. The ideal situation is that this guy gets caught up in traffic, we're going to be able to get it to the Y receiver and be able to get a one-on-one -on -one situation with a free safety on the left-hand side. So let me go ahead and show it to you and then I kind of go 
through it again and see how it goes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the play action here. And you're going to see that he gets caught up. And now you've got nobody here on the right-hand side. You do that juke move there, and you'll be able to get one-on-one -on -one here. Now, that is the play design. I wanted to make sure you see that. This is how it happens, and I wanted to kind of explain it beforehand so then I can explain afterwards, okay? Now, if you look at Luke Keekly, this is a play-action fake. When you cut it off, the running back does not go to the line of scrimmage. He goes behind the line of scrimmage, okay? So when he does that, the middle linebacker here, has to fight through traffic to get to him. Now, he's got here, and you have an open blocker right here who gets him caught up. What that freed, what that does is it frees up this uh, linebacker who's supposed to be covering him right there. And see all that open space that you get. There's not a player anywhere close to him, and that's by design on man coverage. Now, you got one player here that's the free safety, and then you end up getting this one player over here that sometimes this tight end will will go ahead and block, giving you even more room to run. But this time, the tight end doesn't block him, and you can see that you're going to make a one-on-one -on -one play. We were able to juke that guy out pretty easily. Unfortunately, we don't have enough room to juke that guy out, but we're easily getting about 20 yards without having a whole lot of effort. So let me go and show this again here. We're going to put the A, and we're moving him over, and we're only doing that to make sure that the, the uh, linebackers change their assignments. Then we're going to put the X on a drag again. We're going to go ahead and cut this off and see, does he get through? He doesn't get through. And we're going to go through here and we're going to be able to do the same thing we did earlier and get about 15 to 20 yards. Now I'm hoping on this play that I'm going to do the same exact thing we did before. Hope that Keekly gets through. If he doesn't, we're still going to show you the dump off pass. And what that's going to be is going to go to the X receiver. So we're going to hold this here. See, see it doesn't get caught up. We can go ahead and throw this X receiver really, really uh, quickly to be able just to have a dump off route just in case the linebacker makes it through traffic. But the majority of the time, the guy does not make it through traffic. And that's a really good thing for us in order to manipulate some extra yardage against man coverage. The other thing that's really nice that I've noticed is a lot of people use the right linebacker as their user player, especially when you put the tight end over to the left because they're not going to try to play the tight end one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to expect to play the running back one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of times what happens is people give up on the running back. You see a lot of play action plays and the running back usually blocks. So if you're a user, you're looking at the running back, you forget about him and you usually go after the X receiver or the tight end and you let the running back go loose anyways. So we're going to show it to you here and we're going to go ahead and cut it off. You're going to see right there, you have that room to be able to get the 15 to 20 yards really, really easily, guys, and to be able to get that up. That's going to be very frustrating for your opponent. It's going to be able to set up things in the future because if they have to worry about that um, running back in that after play action passes, you're not going to let that... that um, user middle linebacker go ahead and roam the field. He's going to be like, in the back of his mind, do I have to cover this running back? And that's one of those things that we want to make sure that is in the back of his mind early in the game. You can see how the read went that time. I was watching the linebacker the whole time, saw that he got through, so I'm going to dump it off there. But again, that's if the player um, gets through traffic, which does not happen as often as you would think it would. It usually happens about maybe two out of ten times. He gets caught up in the traffic again. See, so that time he actually got through. But you can see because he's stumbling that we're going to be able to get around him because um, he's fighting through traffic. Very um, seldomly does he actually get through traffic without getting hit. So I'm going to show it to you one more time. It's kind of a fun play. It's I kind of showed a bunch of times here. But again, you're going to cut it off, see if he doesn't get through. He doesn't get through. We're going to throw it over there. Even if he does, he plays in a trail position, you're going to get that 15 to 20 pretty easily, guys. So I wanted to show you that play as a man beater. Now the next man beater, we're going to do the same type screen, but we're going to go ahead and try to give it a different look. Now before we showed you go ahead and move this tight end from right to left. This time we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is put the A on a streak, we're going to put the X on a drag. Same thing that we did before, except we're not going to move him over. Now the only difference is this, if you're not going to move the tight end over, you want the play action to go full. Because what you got to think right now is who's covering the running back, and it's going to be that left linebacker now because we didn't move the tight end over. We want the, f the play action to go full because we want that guy to get drawn into the middle, causing him to get caught up. Now, this is a lot of times what we're going to do if the guy's using the middle linebacker on the right-hand side, and he's been able to make some nice plays when we went ahead and moved them over. So now we're changing it up, doing the same play. Now watch that linebacker on the left, Thomas Davis. We're going to let the play action go all the way through. He's going to get caught up in that motion, and you're going to be able to get it up there this time. The same exact way we did before, but this time we're going to be able to um, 
use a little bit different of a look. So let me go ahead and show it to you in slow motion again. And what you're going to see here is this player right here, because of the play action, he's going to go in. As soon as he realizes it's not there, he's going to try to get outside. See how he puts his head back up? But he's got to fight through traffic again. And look at all this traffic. we got those two linemen, and we also have Julio Jones coming across, kind of cutting it off, leaving him get caught by there, and now we're throwing it over that way. So that's two different ways to run this, guys. I want to make sure that you saw that as you go ahead and see um, exactly what type of um, route combinations and different designs that we've got going on. And the next one is basically go ahead and just move this guy over this time. And what you're going to see here is that this A receiver is going to be able to get open on the left-hand side on his cut to the outside. So all you're going to do is you're going to cut this off, and with that slant out play, you're going to go and put it right there. Now, I do suggest you go also put the um, X receiver on a streak just to get everybody cleared out of there. And you're going to see that a lot of times, once you've done this screen, people are going to forget about that tight end. And you're going to be able to just kind of kick it in there and throw it right there. And you're going to be able to get some extra yards really, really quickly against man coverage. This play alone can really frustrate people about man coverage because you have a lot of different options and kind of go from there. Now we're going to go ahead and look at cover two coverage. Because I really like that out screen type design that we did against man coverage, I'm going to go ahead and show it against all coverages, starting with cover two and how to make it there. Now against cover two, you're going to see that the two outside cornerbacks about the five yard depth, that's a standard cover two if they don't make any adjustments. So if you see that, we're going to go ahead and show you how to go ahead and use this play against cover two. What we're going to do here is take this A receiver and we're going to go ahead and drag him and that's going to become your lead blocker all right the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this rb receiver and you're going to move him from right to left this is going to go ahead and give you two post patterns on the left hand side which is going to go ahead and drive all those players back and then again also to the middle of the field open up this play to the wide receiver we're going to cut off the play action and then we're going to go ahead and throw it right there with a lead blocker. And you're going to be able to see if you're able to go ahead and make a little bit better of a move than that, you've got a little bit more openness. This is a good 8 to 10 yard play minimum and then depending what you do afterwards. So let's go ahead and show it to you one more time. A is going to be that drag route that's going to go ahead and give you that lead blocker. The RB is going to be able to help kick people out. You're going to cut off the play action, and then you're going to dump it off to the wide receiver. Cut off play action there. You're going to dump it off the wide receiver. Has that guy as your lead blocker, and you're going to be able to get up the field for, again, 10 yards. As usually a pretty minimum, depending on how you're going to be able to work it. So the next cover two beater, what we're going to do is make sure that this ball is on the left hash only. And what that's going to do is we're going to be able to get to this unique RB route right here. When we motion him over to the left hand side, he becomes a really deep post pattern. In order to get those two safeties to widen out on the field to open that up, we're going to put both of them on fades. So X and B on fades, and that's going to be it. The A is going to hold um, those linebackers right about that 40-yard mark because that's where they're going to be able to get that threat, giving that ability to hit that RB over the top. So what you're going to do is let the play action go through. You're going to see that RB there. You're going to lob it and pass lead it to the middle of the field, and you're going to see how open that guy gets when you do that. This last cover two setup we got going on here can be done anywhere on the field, but it works best in the middle or the right hand side, and I'll show you why. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this A receiver, and we're going to keep him on the post, but we're going to put him on a smart route. That's going to make his post a little bit deeper up the field. Then we're going to take the RB, and we're going to put him on a drag. The drag in combination with the X's route is going to what makes this play. The drag is going to keep those linebackers a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage, and then by the time he gets to the left side of the field, it's going to ultimately keep that one cornerback closer to the field, opening up this A route. The X is going to be the other player that needs to be able to pull that one free safety towards the middle of the field as he does his cut, leaving the A wide open to catch the ball and get the, and turn up the field and get a lot of yards after catch. Let me go ahead and show it to you. You want to keep the play action, go through the play action here, you're going to watch that A receiver, you're going to pass lead it up, press the X button, you're going to see how much yards he has after the play to get the ball um, down the field and get a really, really big uh, game. I'll show it to you one more time before we get to the cover threes that we got going on here. So A on a smart route, RB on a drag, keep the play action, and what we're going to do here is watch, wait for the A, you're going to see he's right there, throw it right there in that little pocket, get the ball, and see how consistent it is against cover two. It's definitely a killer to be able to move on.
So now we're going to look at the cover three beaters. And on our cover three beaters, make sure you look at the play call sheet that we have available at smartmadden.com to make sure that you see which hash mark that I want you to use these on. A lot of these cover three specifics are going to have to be on a certain hash mark to get the best results. So I've queued it up on this first one that's going to be on the right hash mark. And you're going to see why once I show you exactly what happens on this play. We're going to take this unique RB route and be able to use it to our advantage by taking him and seeing if we can get a reaction from the right cornerback on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is show you what we're going to do here. We're going to put the B on a streak and put the A on a flat and block your running back. You don't want the play action because you want to be able to get this ball out when you want to. Now, what's going to happen here is one or two things. Either the cornerback on the right hand side is going to cover the B all the way down the field. It's going to leave the RB wide open against cover three. But most of the time what happens is that if you have the right speed correlation to where the RB gets down the field quicker than the B receiver, that guy is going to take a false step to the RB because he gets in his zone, leaving the, the B to get a free release down the field, and you're able to throw it over the top to him for the easy score. So let's go ahead and watch this. You want to be a little bit patient on this. You're going to see that he's going to jump that. See when he jumps that ball? You're throwing that ball over the top to this player. Now let me go ahead and show it to you. Be patient when you know the guy gets down the field because that will open up. It's very consistent. You do want to make sure you have some speed correlation that your slowest receiver is on the right-hand side so this guy gets down the field a little bit more. So watch what happens here. The, the streak goes down. He's, he's covered, he's covered, he's covered. Now what happens here is when this guy gets into his zone, this guy says, oh, wait, that's my guy. And he goes ahead and covers that guy just for a half a second to throw it and lets this guy get over the top and throw it. This only works like this particular way on the right hash on this way. We're going to show you to you differently later, but for the most part, this is the most consistent here. He's going to go ahead and watch it, and he's going to go over the top for the easy touchdown. Let me go ahead and show it to you again here. So you're going to look at that RB receiver, see if he gets down the field. He did get down the field pretty easily. Now you're going to throw this ball over the top to the B receiver for the easy guys. That's the way it consistently works. As long as, long as that RB doesn't get bumped, you're going to be fine there. So let's go show it to you one more time. And you're going to see here, let's see if the RB gets bumped. It gets bumped a little bit. We can throw this ball early, but you can see that you, can th you want to throw it to the sidelines if you are not sure. If you are sure that, that you have that ability to, you can throw it a little bit uh, later, and you get more yardage. So you can see here, we're throwing it right there, and that's when you get a little bit more yards down the field. So it all depends on how you want this to work, guys. It all depends on what you see, what you read from the RB player. But... Obviously, we're going for the home run, so if you have that ability to do it, throw that ball over the top. You can see that time, I kind of made sure that we had the, enough uh, air on that ball, and I kind of overthrew it. But you can see what the potential is on this play. If you time it right, that time, I'm going to go throw it to there, just because I knew that... Um, I didn't want to wait for myself to get sacked. If he was open, I was going to throw it. But sometimes, you know, it all depends on what you feel. Like, that guy looks like he's going to be able to do this. So, you see that there? Easy touchdown, guys. And put that in your arsenal. So now we're going to move the ball to the middle of the field and do a very similar um, route combination for cover three. We're going to put the B on a streak and the A on the flat like we did before. But this time we're going to put the RB on a smart route. Let him go ahead and make his cut a little bit quicker on a normal type corner route. And we're going to go ahead and keep the play action. And we're going to cut it off. And then we're going to go ahead and throw this to the RB right there and get that easy, nice 15 to 20 yard gain. So now we're going to go ahead and attack cover three to the wide side of the field. We're going to put the ball on the left hash and make this a left hash only mark. And we're going to show you exactly how we can do this. We're going to put the X on a drag, the A on a streak, the B on a streak. What we're going to do here is you're going to see that the RB, because he's now in the slot from the left-hand side of the field where the ball is, he's not going to get bumped at all because that one DB is on cover three is going to go towards the flat to cover the flat, right? So he's going to be unbumpable, getting him down the field quicker. When he gets down the ball quicker, what's going to end up happening is that B is going to get freed and released and you're going to be able to throw the ball over the top to him. The reason why we put the A on a streak is we're going to try to get him to manipulate that one free safety to stay close to the middle of the field as we can so that we can have an easier throw to that guy over the top. In case we get pressure that X is going to be a dump off route and we're going to be able to just dump it to him for a five yard gain um, just to make sure that we don't get um, sacked on this play. So here we go. Let's run the play here. Run the pull play action. We got time here. You can see there. And you guys see this ball right here in that little gap, the way I told you it was going to work out perfectly. Now let me go ahead and show you an instant replay. And you're going to see here that 
This guy right here is the, the primary receiver. You see how I told you this guy wasn't going to get bumped because this guy's going to go towards the, um, he's going to take a step towards the flat first because that's his area. And then he realizes nobody's there. So he's going to just stay put. Now you're going to see that because he got a free release. He's basically out running this guy. And that's important to us because that's going to get the first reaction to that cornerback. When he makes that out is when that cornerback actually widens out a little bit. See how he widens out and goes after that player? That frees up this one player to get just that's enough steps to be able to throw it over the top. This one player here kept that free safety at bay as far as we can to give that option to throw that ball right there and be able to get the easy touchdown. Okay, so that's how that's drawn up, guys. And that's based upon everything we um, have taught you as far as how to make play designs work. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the X receiver. I'm going to throw it to him. In case you get some pressure in your face, you only just want to throw it to this X receiver right here. And we do that on purpose as well because we want to make sure that you do have that fail-safe round in case something gets in your face um, on that play. So that's how you work that one. This next play can work either in the middle of the field or the left, but I put it in the middle of the field just so you can see it from here. What you're going to do is you're going to put this X on a uh, comeback, the A on a fade, and you're going to take this B receiver and move him over and put him on a streak. What that's going to do is going to kind of go ahead and give you a 1-2 punch on the right-hand side. That RB is going to be able to widen out that cornerback, leaving that little gap on the A receiver for that little alley to throw it to him. Now, the B is going to be a player that we're going to want to go ahead and get the attention of the free safety to move the free safety to the left hand side and that's the idea so let's go ahead and show it to you here you let the play action go you're going to see here that this a is going to be wide open that little gap for the nice little seam route for the touchdown guys that's how this play is drawn up this next cover three beater we're going to put in the left side hash in order to attack the cover three coverage to the wide side we're going to do by so um by putting this rb on motion to the left hand side making sure that deep route that he has Place our advantage on a deep post. We're going to put the X on a drag to hold the linebackers as close as possible, the A on a streak, and the B on a comeback. What that's going to do is allow the A to drive away that free safety, leaving that RB over the top for the huge throw. If you get a little bit of pressure in your face, you might want to go ahead and bullet to the RB and let him do the rest of the work himself by when he catches it using his legs, or you can go ahead and dump it off to that X receiver. Now, for some reason, that A receiver gets bumped off his route a couple times. He'll end up being our uh, primary receiver as the free safety will cover that RB. Let's go ahead and show it to here. Take the play action there. You're going to see that he's going to be wide open. And you're going to see that majestic throw that I was telling you about right there for the easy catch. Okay, So that's the way it's designed to work. Now, if anybody gets in our face, like I said before, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and throw the bullet. And I'll try to show it to you that right here. And you can see right there, you can throw that bullet right there and be able to get that ball a little bit quicker to that guy and let him run it in. Or you can go ahead and dump the ball off to the X receiver and be able to make sure that you have that ability to... Um, and, and that's one of those things that the guy's coming really, really quickly. You can go ahead and cut this off like this. And then you can go ahead and when everybody gets driven out, be able to get a little bit of yardage as well for a fail safe. So, but the first way is the, really the way we want it to work. A on a streak. Most guy over. X on a drag. B on a comeback. And like I said before, if the A gets bumped around, he becomes your primary receiver. It just doesn't happen as often, so I don't want to keep on playing this just to show it to you. But at the same time, there's the throw. I kind of got um, on that play... Um, I threw it way too far to the right. That's why sometimes if you do the majestic throw, you're going to get yourself caught up just because you're trying to be greedy. Just go ahead and throw the bullet pass um, the majority of the time if you don't know if it's open or not. And you can see right here, um, we're going to throw that ball bulleted and be able to get that ball down the field. So you can see how well this play works against cover three. So this next cover three is kind of a little bit of a fun play. What we do is we're going to go ahead and get the tight end involved. And we're going to go ahead and roll to the right and throw left and kind of really keep your opponent kind of guessing. So we're going to do put the X on a streak, the B on an in. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut off the play action, roll to the right, stop on a dime, throw it there, and you can see how wide open this guy gets on the left-hand side. I'll show it to you one more time so you can see it and follow it a little bit better. It's going to be X on a streak, B on an in, go ahead, cut this off, roll to the right, stop on a dime, throw this ball, pass lead up, and then go ahead and do what you got to do to get the ball in the end zone on a fake. Okay? So that's how you do that. It's a little fun play that we do against cover three. Our last cover three beater is going to be a makeshift screen to the running back. What we're going to do is put the RB on a drag. We're going to go ahead and move this 
B receiver after we recurl him and move him over. By putting him on a different curl, you're going to get a different angle, and you're going to be able to isolate this nickel back that's right above him. We're going to cut off the play action, and then we're going to fire it to this wide receiver with that lead block, and we're going to be able to get up the field and be able to get some yards after the catch as soon as we have that ability to get some extra yards. So now we're going to look at cover four beaters. We're going to show you one down the field and one with the out screen. The one down the field is going to be very similar to the one that we did against cover three. We're going to put the B on a comeback, the A on a streak, and we're going to move this guy over. Cover three, we did the same thing, but we went ahead and put the X on a drag. We need the X on this route to make sure that, that cover four works. Now, if you get anybody in your face, you can always dump it off to the Y receiver because we're going to keep him on his route. But the real person we're really trying to get is this red route with the RB down the field for the throw over the top to the right hand side when everybody clears out. Let's go ahead and show it to here. As long as we got thing we don't have the protection, so we're gonna throw this to this player and we're gonna go ahead and get the ball to him just as a dump off pass initially against cover four. Let's go ahead and show it to you again, see if we can get some better protection this time. And we've got our setup already. Let the guy settle. Go ahead and let's get down the field. Again that guy's in my face. So we're gonna go ahead and just get the ball down kind of show you a little bit better about the cover four, put this guy on a streak, move this guy over, um, B on a comeback. Let's go ahead and, okay, we got our protection this time. It's going to work, it's going to go over the top for the easy bomb. You can see I kind of loft that up there because I wanted to throw that throw deep. It's one of those deals that you can definitely throw a little bit more in a line if you really don't want to um, chance it as much as I do. But um, you can see how open he's going to get as long as you got your protection. Um, we're going to try to buy some time here. We're going to throw it over the top again and be able to get that ball down the field. So that is your cover four down the field. Let's go ahead and show you your um, cover four out screen. Just to make sure I touch on that, that play would have worked on the middle or the left side, but the cover four down the field will not work on the right side because you need that area to throw the ball. Now, um, the makeshift screen that we're going to do at this, all we're going to do is put the A on a drag and motion this RB to the left. What that's going to do is going to do a double post on the left hand side, clear everybody out, then you have that um, extra blocker with the A receiver. So you're going to cut this off, you're going to see that everybody's going to get down the field, you're going to throw this there, and you want to cut behind that player and get the ball down there. I didn't show you a great opportunity to throw, but you can definitely see you want to do the double post on the left and put the A on a drag. By doing so, you're clearing out that whole left side, and you're going to want to make sure that that A receiver is that one block, and you want to cut behind him right there and get down the field. You can see that I'm not doing as much success as far as getting the run after the catch but you definitely see where you're going to be able to clear out the whole left side by moving that guy over and you're going to be able to cut this off and this looks like it's going to be a better setup for us. Let that guy get his block and get the easy 15 yards guys. So that is your PA cross up play. This is Ant Cap from smartmadden.com. Want to make sure you guys go ahead and get the play call sheets for the uh, pistol Y trips as soon as the whole series is over. So definitely go check that out guys. Appreciate you guys all. Have a good one.